Hello and welcome to Coco Styling, the best place for styling tips for dark-skinned women. Before we dive in, I wanted to make an announcement. Many of you have been contacting me for an in-detail consultation service and I wanted to let you know that we have finally set up the website. It's at cocostyling.com and now you can hire me to be your personal style consultant. And if you only have simple questions about my videos, just post them here in the comments or DM me on Instagram. Now that you know the best colors for your features, it's time to learn how to wear them. If you haven't watched the other parts of this color series, I recommend you do that before you see this video. We have part 1 and it was how to determine your skin tone and undertones, part 2 how to determine your color season and type, and part 3. 3 and 4 were color analysis for warm and cool seasons. The links will be in the description below. So now, let's learn about color. We have three primary colors. These are colors you cannot create mixing other pigments. We have subtractive primary colors and additive primary colors. Additive colors are for digital work, so it's not relevant in this video. Substractive primary colors are cyan, magenta, and yellow. However, in styling, we use the painter's primary colors. These are red, blue, and yellow. Secondary colors are the ones you get when you combine two primary colors. In the subtractive color wheel, they are green, red, and blue. In the painter's color wheel, they are orange, green, and violet. And finally, we have tertiary colors. They are secondary colors mixed with a primary color, so you will get a bluer, redder, or yellower hue. How do we get color variations? You can add white, gray, or black to any hue and that will change the tone. To understand the basics of color theory, you need to know six words. Hue, saturation, and volume. Hue means the color itself. Saturation is how much gray you add to the color. Value is how much white or black you add to the color. The other three words are tint, shade, and tone. Tint is the action of adding white, shade is the action of adding black, and tone is the action of adding gray. So, tint and shade change the value of a color, and tone changes the saturation of the color. Mixing different colors will create different hues and effects like a cool red or a warm green. All of these methods are how we get different colors for different color palettes. This is really important to determine, for example, which purple looks best on each season. And now, finally, the exciting part of this video. How to mix and wear these colors. Monochrome. The easiest way to wear a color is to just wear a monochromatic outfit, whether they all have the same saturation and value level, or if it's different. Most of the times, if it's in the same hue or the same color family, it will match. Here we have some monochromatic examples. As you can see, you can wear the same color head to toe, or wear different variations of that color. Neutral. Traditionally, neutrals are colors that don't show up on the color wheel, like black, gray, and some hues of brown and beige. They can also be described as earth tones. However, in styling, neutral colors are white, ivory, brown, blue, navy, black, gray, and sometimes a few shades of olive and dusty pinks. And some metallics might fit into this category too. Remember, ivory is better for warm-toned people and white is better for cool-toned people. You can wear neutrals with neutrals, monochromatic neutrals, or neutrals with accents. Neutrals with accents. When you wear mostly neutral colors, but you might still want a pop of color. This is a great option if you want to add more color to your wardrobe, but you don't want to feel overwhelmed by color blocking. This technique will help you dip your toes into wearing more colors if you usually just wear neutral shades. Here we have a few great examples like wearing a neutral color base and a bag or a shirt in an interesting color. Color blocking. I would say color blocking can be the most fun color combination method. 
However, it can be very frustrating at times when you're trying a new outfit or trying new color combinations that you have never done before. It gets more daring as you add colors. The easiest one is just wearing two, even three. But when you go over that with four or even five, it is really, really tricky. There are six main ways to color block and to do this, you need a color wheel. Don't worry a lot about your season yet. First, understand the color wheel and then look at your colors in it. So, our different types of color blocking are complementary colors, analog colors, triadic colors, complementary split colors, tetradic or double complementary colors, and tetradic too, being double complementary split colors. First, we have complementary colors. These are the opposite colors on the wheel. This creates the most contrast in any color combination. Because this creates a remarkably high contrast, this is usually the bolder option. So don't worry if you don't feel comfortable wearing this one. A good tip if you want to wear complementary colors without it being so bold is to wear the less saturated colors instead of wearing pure hues. Instead of wearing separate pieces, wear something like a dress with a complementary color print and using mostly one color but picking accessories in a complementary color. Analog. They are next to each other on the color wheel and it creates a bit more contrast than wearing a monochromatic look, but not as much as the complementary color options. This is one step further in experimenting with colors than just wearing neutrals with color accents. Triadic. This is when you pick three colors that are equidistant from each other, meaning they have the same number of spaces between each other. For example, the colors that I picked on this color wheel example are three spaces apart from each other. You can also make a triadic color scheme with colors that are only one space apart, like this Willow Smith example. Tetradic. This is when you choose two pairs of complementary colors but they are two colors apart. It's like placing a square inside of the color wheel. Complementary split. This is like a triad, but you pick the analog colors of the complementary one. This means you look at the color in front of the one you want and pick their analog colors. This sounds very confusing, so here's the example. I picked this green tone, so its complementary color would be this shade of Violet. If you split that and pick their analog colors, you get red and violet. Double complementary. This one is very similar to the tetradic scheme, but in this case you choose two pairs of complementary colors. These ones are three spaces apart, so it's like placing a rectangle inside of the color wheel instead of a square. Another way to color block would be to pick two primary colors, like red and yellow, red and blue, or blue and yellow. Color blocking can be very confusing in words because it's part of the color theory, and if you haven't worked in art or something similar, the information can be overwhelming. It's a great idea to have a color wheel example in hand when you're trying something new. There are, numer there are numerous color wheels with different levels of saturation and value. Also, it's not limited to the color combinations in this chart, but it can be a very helpful guide when you are just starting out. I will be posting these same charts on my Instagram at Coco Styling, and you can also look for them on the internet. You shouldn't be afraid to try new things. And if you want or need help, just DM me on Instagram or comment your question here. The same principles apply when wearing prints. I will make a video about it later if you guys want me to go in detail about it. You can also apply it to makeup and create bold looks if you combine this with the skin tone and seasonal method on the other parts of this series. Personally, I used to only wear black and sometimes pink because those were my favorite colors and I always saw my mother wearing black and other neutral colors because of her job. It was after I started my degree in graphic design that I started experimenting with colors, but I have always loved wearing only black. So I bought a lot of shoes in interesting colors and started experimenting with that. After 
styling school, I lost my fear of wearing bold colors. Here are some tips to start your color journey. When you buy shoes instead of buying when you buy shoes instead of going for the black or brown pair, you can go for the red or maybe even yellow. This will basically force you to try something new. Some people don't like shoes as much as I do. They like bags a lot more. And I honestly think maybe pairing a colored bag is easier. Instead of getting the black or neutral toned bag, you can get the hot pink bag or the forest green bag, which is a colored bag, but it is a darker color, so the contrast level doesn't go as high as the hot pink bag. So it's a great idea if you just want to try something a little bit more toned down. Hair accessories, scarves, bonnets, especially as black women, we have such a big selection, we should take advantage of it. This one is pretty small, but for me it was a huge eye-opener. When buying metallic pieces, instead of just going for silver and gold, you can try other colors like bronze, rose gold, and copper. They can look amazing if you pair them with the right outfit. And you will probably get lots of compliments because it's something new and they look great. Planning an outfit from scratch can be a bit difficult, so inspiration is key. You can go to Instagram, look at YouTube lookbooks, Pinterest, and Vogue's app Runway. It has so many streetwear looks and most of Fashion Week's runway looks. I usually use this app daily because of my job, but it is honestly great if you're looking for outfit inspirations. Thank you for watching my video and leave a like and subscribe if you liked it. You can DM me on Instagram if you have any questions or if you want me to cover a specific topic. Don't forget to turn on your notifications so you don't miss next video. You can also tag me on your pictures when you're trying new looks if you want to. Have a nice day and I hope to see you soon.